In this segment is Mike Pushkin. He is the state Democratic Party chair. He's also a delegate out of the 54th. Michael, good morning. How are you, sir? Thanks for joining us. Uh, good morning. Thanks for having me on. Hey, we had uh, Delegate Wayne Clark on earlier today, and he said you pulled a little maneuver yesterday. I uh, made a uh, procedural motion, as uh, any of the 100 members of the House of Delegates uh, can do. Well, I mean, a lot of Republicans talk about wanting to cut taxes, and, and the governor has had put this proposal out there to further cut the personal income tax. And uh, he has had more than ample time to build a consensus within his own party, uh, of which he has a huge ad advantage, which he, he ha his party has uh, super majorities in both the House and the Senate, as we know. Um, so I uh, made a motion that we vote on it. Uh, they've had plenty of time to discuss it. They've had plenty of time to vet it. Uh, the motion was that we bring it to the floor just like we did several of the other bills. Say, because I'm, I'm, I'll tell you the truth. I think people are getting tired of hearing people say, "Well, I'm all for tax cuts," but well, if you're for it, then vote up or down on it. We're ready to vote. I think that's a pretty tactically brilliant strategy by you, Mr. Pushkin. Well, I, I rarely get accused of being uh, of being smart, <laughs> so I appreciate that. <laughs> now, what proceeded after you made that motion? Um, well, a vote along party lines. I believe maybe three Republicans. Uh, did the right thing and, and voted with the Democrats on that. Uh, but of, of course, you know, many of them just march in lockstep and just instinctively vote against procedural motions from Democrats, even though we're right uh, most of the time. The uh, tax cut the governor is proposing, there was already a trigger for 4%. He wanted the additional five from a fiscal standpoint. Mike, what are your thoughts on that? Well, um, I mean, personally, I'd like to put in some more uh, uh, triggers, like say, uh, you know, once we clear the wait list for all the families on the IDD wait list, uh, waiting to get help, uh, you know, in-home in help for loved ones with intellectual or developmental disabilities, or, or maybe once we find placement uh, for children in foster care, we have over 6,000 children in state's custody right now. Uh, we don't have enough teachers in the cloud. There's a whole lot of basic services that aren't being met, but I was ready to discuss it. Um, uh, yesterday during this special, I'm not even sure why the governor called a special session. To be quite honest, um, you know, generally special sessions coincide with interim meetings, so it doesn't cost the taxpayers any extra money. Uh, yesterday did not coincide with an interim meeting. It, it, the, it was all completely on the taxpayers' dime, which is, if I must note, is more now than it used to be because uh, two sessions ago the Republicans voted to give themselves a big pay raise in the legislature the same week that they raised uh, insurance premiums on public workers, I might add. Uh, so this was all on the taxpayers' time. Generally, a, a, a special session is called where there's some great urgency. Uh, and the only urgency I can see is that uh, there's an election in 35 days, and maybe the governor's trying to distract some, from some of the uh, uh, negative news that he's had lately about his business dealings and you know, failure to pay uh, taxes, pay off debts. Um, you know, he's the only governor I've ever heard of that has his wages garnished. Um, I, I don't understand why the, the I didn't see the urgency for this special session. John Bodwell. Did um, when they did the pay raise vote, did that go along? Did the vote go along party lines? Just out of curiosity. All of the Democrats voted against it in the House. OK, there were a handful of Republicans um, that voted with the Democrats. Um, most of the, uh, I'd say most of the Republican delegates in your area voted for giving themselves a pay raise. And some of them were, it was their freshman year. Uh, they just got up there and you know, one of their first things they do is vote to give themselves a pay raise. Well, I got to say, I'm a fiscal conservative, but I believe we need to get the IDD waiver completely funded. I believe we need to get the kids out of foster care and we need to completely fund that. And I believe we also need to pay teachers a lot more money because I am a free market Hello? guy, and obviously the free market is not um, – it's not working. We're not paying teachers enough because we don't have enough teachers, whatever the market will bear. So, I mean, I, we need to pay these people more, I think, and then obviously give as many tax breaks as possible. Hold on. we uh, uh, Did we lose Mike? I think that's Mike calling back. Yeah. Michael, did, did we lose you, Mike? I, I, we better vacate the building. I think there's an alarm going off. <laughs> Is that a <laughs> spotted lantern fly alert? <laughs> I think. Hello? Yeah, are you back, Mike? 
Can you hear us okay? Did we lose you? I think we've lost him. No, I can hear you now. Okay. Okay. Very I good. couldn't hear you. My phone was still on, but I, I couldn't hear. What, what I was saying was, I, I believe we, we need to completely fund the IDD waiver so we're taking care of these people who can't take care of themselves. We need to get the kids out of foster care. We need to spend the money on that. And we need to pay teachers more. I, I said it on air a minute or so ago that I'm, I'm a free market guy, and the mark, whatever the market will bear is what you need to pay. And obviously we're not paying enough because we're not getting enough teachers. If you're in business, if you're in a business, as every business in the state has found, they're not paying people enough. All of a sudden, Sheets is starting people off at $18 an hour, and they were paying $10 an hour three, four years ago because that is what the market will bear. So we've got to get teacher and state employee pay up to a point where they are making enough money where people want to work for the state. I agree. I mean, I guess the, the, the difference is there, like just a, you know, what are – the fundamental belief in, in what the role of government is. And at very least, uh, it's to do the things that, that the private sector can't do. It's not profitable, nor should it be profitable. And that's taking care of those who really need our help, whether it's children in state's custody or, or families who are struggling to take care of, uh, of loved ones with intellectual and developmental disabilities or having what we're required to do by the Constitution is having a, a free education and a good education for all of our kids, all of our kids, not just the ones that can afford to uh, to go to a private school. Um, so, that, and those basic services just aren't being met. So, I think that's you know the a real uh, difference in, in some you know political ideology well, well, that we that, uh, well, that we have up there. Mike, I'm I'm a fiscal conservative, okay, but I believe a just society takes care of the ill, the infirm, the old, and the children. I need if if they if there are need if their needs are not being met, we're not doing what we're supposed to as a society. I also believe that an unjust society takes care of the lazy, and I think we spend too much money taking care of the lazy. Um, and we need we need we need to balance that out. We need to take care of the people who can't help themselves and stop taking care of the lazy. I think whenever you well, do that from now on, when you go on a bottle of random playing God Bless America underneath you, I bubble. love that. <laughs> I love that. I am yeah. opining. The Republicans have had uh, control of the state government for now a decade, and there's been, there was a lot of talk about reining in waste, fraud, and abuse, and uh, they just uh, we haven't seen them do that. We have not seen them do that. But basic needs to to uh, the folks who you and I can both agree we need to be taken care of: children in foster care. Uh, people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, you know, seniors, veterans, those folks, those basic needs are not being met under this administration and the Republican supermajorities in the legislature. It's um, just not. It's not getting done, and it's sad. Well, you know, I think it starts at the top when you have a governor who just doesn't show up for work. He does not do his job. He doesn't know how to do his job. You know, it was it was embarrassing, and this hasn't been reported, but he showed up for a. A, um, a forum that was hosted by the uh, hospital association last week, and he brought with him, of course, his dog and another st- state employee, uh, Larry Pack, uh, the you know, secretary of, 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 uh, of finance, um, to answer questions for him because he didn't know the answers. I mean, when do you, a, a political candidate running for the U.S. Senate has to bring in uh, a cabinet secretary to answer questions for him because he doesn't know the answers because he doesn't show up for work he doesn't do his job and and across the state you know we see this complete dysfunction in every state agency because it all starts at the top the boss doesn't show up for work he doesn't do his job mike pushkin our guest here on the program mike when they retooled dhhr into three different components the thought was, at least the hope was, it would make it more efficient and uh, make it easier for you folks to get answers as to why some things were falling through the cracks and things weren't getting done. Have you seen any benefits from that to this point? No. No, my concern was when, when we divided, and I voted, you know, we all voted to to divide the agencies up. It was too big. And we thought the thought was that it would make it more manageable. My concern was without any real cultural change in these departments instead of having you know one huge dysfunctional department we would have three slightly smaller dysfunctional departments so we end up well, that's what we have uh, three slightly smaller uh, dysfunctional departments 
And no, we aren't getting answers. And they, they refuse to respond to FOIA requests. They don't uh, give us real answers in front of committees. Uh, there's just just been this shroud of secrecy over the entire Justice Administration. He doesn't um, allow people to respond to requests from the media or even from requests from from elected uh, you know, lawmakers. And it's and who suffers in this? Children in foster care, who some of whom now we're learning are being dropped off at motels and 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 state parks across the state because there aren't placements and there's no place to for them to put them. It's and uh, it, people, the, the, once again, the families on the waiting list uh, of you know children that are being pulled out of public schools uh, to, because of uh, uh, situations at home that that the parents are wanting to cover up. We're learning more and more about these horrific issues. That was something else the governor said going into the special session when asked about why he didn't do anything about this issue with certain homeschoolers. And of course, we're not going to paint them with a broad brush, but certain homeschoolers that are pulled out to cover up signs of abuse. He said it was too complicated an issue. Too complicated an issue. You're the governor of the state, and we're talking about saving the lives of children. And he says it's too complicated of an issue. Doesn't do anything about it. It's 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 sad. Matt Miller. When I listen to the things that are going on and and think of of the kids in foster care and and those who are in needs, what part of the budget? would that take when we talk about the four uh, percent decrease in the state income tax that is automatically kicked in and now the governor wanting an additional five percent what would that money mean towards helping with these issues well uh, it, of course with with less revenue and no cuts anywhere else you to, i mean we're not meeting those needs right now so how would having you know, be less to put into it uh, you know, that would definitely not improve the situation, and, and most likelihood, it's going to make the situation worse. I mean, this is not, uh, you know, there's no easy answers to the foster care situation. You're talking about long term. If you really want to fix it, you have to go to the root of the problem, and that's addressing issues with families, making it easier for families to stay together, making sure we have help uh, for for the parents, uh, so they're less likely to be in a situation where the state. You know, are taking their children from them. Now, once those children are are removed from the home, though, they're the responsibility of the state government. They're the responsibility of the state legislature, who's doing absolutely nothing to address the situation. And they're the responsibility of Jim Justice, who can't even bring himself to show up for work and, and barely pays lip service to the issue. So it's, I'm frustrated. Uh, you know, I think you can tell by the tone of my voice. So from what I've read, I, I guess the can has been kicked down the road to this coming weekend when the interim session kicks in. Will this 5% potential uh, cut to the income tax then be taken up again? Where do you see it going at that point? I, I don't think so. I, I mean, I think that uh, it, it's definitely not going to make it through the Senate, and that's why um, – I, it wasn't on the agenda, you know. They they referred it to the uh, House Committee on mm -hmm. Finance yesterday, but and they met, but it wasn't on the agenda. Um, and that's why I made that procedural motion yesterday to you know, suspend the constitutional rule, read it three times, and bring it to the floor. Let us vote on it. Uh, we were ready to deliberate on it. We were ready to discuss it. We were ready to amend it. I had some amendments for it ready to go, uh, but the you know all but three Republicans voted to uh, kick the can down the road, send it up to a committee where they didn't even put it on the agenda. So, yeah, it's my belief that it's not going to be taken up. I wanted to give them a chance to vote. I think yesterday was our only chance to vote on it. Mike, in interviewing Democratic candidates for office, especially the ones who are running for national office or, or broader uh, profile offices here in the state, the one theme that has been true for all of them, it seems to be, is they're not getting any national support from the Democratic Party. It appears that there is no Democratic money flowing into the state from a national basis for support of candidates here. Are you hearing the same thing? And is there anything as the state Democratic Party chair you can do to help your uh, candidates in the state of West Virginia? Well, that's first of all, it's not entirely true. We are receiving some uh, some national money from the Democratic Party here, uh, mainly to help aid and get out the vote efforts that will help you know, every Democrat on the ballot, and in turn will help the state because I think we're going to have a far better government when we have more Democrats in office. 
Um, but yeah, of course the party prioritizes, and you know, with the you know the, the climate in this state over the past decade, it, it is harder to convince those outside the state to invest more here. But we, you know, I'm going to keep fighting for it. I think West Virginia is worth it, and I think the uh, people of West Virginia are better represented uh, by folks who believe in uh, you know. Uh, a decent wage, a fair wage, safety at the workplace, good roads, uh, good schools for everybody's children, not the, not just the uh, wealthiest 1%. Uh, I think the uh, most people in the state, I believe, support uh, uh, reproductive freedom for women. Um, so I, I think that we are more aligned uh, with the ideology of most folks in this state, and we've got a huge uphill battle to get that message out, but we're going to keep fighting because uh, I think West Virginia is worth it. That's your national money. In regards to the state money, have you been able to effectively fundraise in West Virginia? Yeah, fundraising has definitely um, has picked up. I think that um, you know nationally, and it, it the enthusiasm and the momentum, excitement is definitely on our side. Well, once the uh, the change was made at the top of the ticket, and there are a lot of people very excited to support uh, Vice President Harris and Governor Walls. And that's even in a state like West Virginia. Uh, we are our, our local offices are seeing a lot more activity, a lot more volunteers showing up. Our website has been blowing up with people who want to volunteer. Uh, we just had a um, you know the Roosevelt Kennedy dinner on, of course, during inclement weather. It was held on Friday night in Charleston, and we still had a packed house. Um, but yeah, we are still raising money, and more importantly. We have a lot of people signing up to volunteer. We got a lot of people who are very excited uh, to vote, and it's always good to have the enthusiasm and at, uh, on your side and you know the wind at your back. Mike, is all of that then leading towards more folks who are saying I'm ready and willing to be a candidate in in some of these races? Obviously, not for the upcoming election, but uh, as you're looking into the future, are you finding more folks who are ready to jump in in that way? I think more folks are wanting to get involved also because they're just frustrated with the, uh, with the, the horrible job that's been that the Republicans have done over the past decade, their failure to address uh, a lot of issues that are very important to West Virginians. And uh, you know, unfortunately, it just uh, it's it's taken some uh, real failures on their part to really uh, awaken people to this uh, to this reality. But yeah, I'm hearing more and more from frustrated people uh, that are ready to step up. You know, there, we were able to make a couple of um, uh, ballot appointments uh, where some folks were, were taken off the ballot. Like we had a short window to uh, make some ballot appointments, and I'll give you an example of somebody who was just frustrated and stepped up and decided to run. It was down in in, um, in Fayette County, a, um, a woman named Melissa Colagroso, who runs one of the uh, larger um, you know, child care agencies in that part of the state. She was really, you know, sick and tired of, of of the legislature and the governor just paying lip service to this issue that is a crisis. People do not have access to child care across the state, and uh, so when we called her and asked if she was interested in uh, being appointed to the ballot, she was ready to go. So I think you're going to see more and more of that uh, in coming election cycles. People have just had it, and they're they know the best way to do something about it is to step up and put their name on the ballot. I've got a minute left, Mike. What is the uh, future and the possibility of a 5% pay raise for state employees in the next year? Well, they deserve it, um, especially after the, uh, the you know, Republican legislature voted to raise their insurance premiums. You know, at, During the same week that they voted, the, the Republican legislators gave themselves a pay raise. Uh, yeah, I, I voted against the pay raise for legislators. I think we should be taking care of those who take care of us, our state employees who do a, a great job. So um, I don't know, you know who's going to be in the legislature. Hopefully, we have some more Democrats in the legislature next year. Then we'll be able to get better, you know, more things done for the people who deserve it in this state. You are opposed in your general election. Is the seat that you have generally considered to be a fairly safe seat for Democrats, or are you also feeling the heat? I don't take anything for granted. I, I um, you know, I, I, I make myself very accessible. Uh, people always know where to find me. 
and uh, you know my phone rings off the hook all day. I stay try to stay in touch with the folks in the district. So I will continue to work very hard uh, for the folks down here in Charleston. But I take absolutely nothing for granted, and I am opposed in the election. Have a good day, sir, and appreciate you joining us. All right, thanks for having me on. I appreciate y'all. Thanks. Thank you. State Democratic Party Chairman Delegate Mike Pushkin back.